G'day and welcome. In today's video, we are going to show you all of the equipment that we carry on this long-term overland journey around the world. Rock climbing, hiking, camping, and for training. We've been on the road pretty much full-time now for about seven years. So we, I think the equipment that we're carrying, I can confidently say that it's good gear. So, do you guys like our new house? This video coming to you from Hakuba in Japan. We are very, very lucky and grateful to Aya and Dan. Thank you so very much. Aya and Dan live here in Hakuba, Japan. Dan's an Aussie, Aya's from Japan, and they run the Hakuba Brew Pub. And they've also got some accommodation here as well, Hakuba Holiday. If you guys are ever planning or dreamt of coming snowboarding or skiing, in Japan, Hakuba is the place to come. Come and see Dan and Aya. I will just look around me. I will work through a bit of a pattern. This is, like I mentioned earlier, all of our gear, training equipment. We do try our best to keep fit and healthy while traveling full time. We have a very compact and lightweight training kit. This is the TRX. It's not actually a TRX. I just call them all TRXs because I used to have a TRX or a suspension trainer. I'm not gonna go into how to use it at all, but it's awesome. It's super lightweight. Everything that we own, gym equipment, packs into this little bag here, one little net. We have two elastic bands, two skipping ropes or jump ropes. These are our sleeping mats or inflatable mattresses that we take hiking and camping. These are Tensor Nemo. This is tiny and that's my hand. My hands are not that big, but that, that's it, one of them. And these are super comfy sleeping mats, good for long distance hiking. Double pluggers, one set of thongs. Flip-flops in the UK, Kiwis call them jandals. Give it the jandal, bro. Here, everybody's all time favorite. Hello, Chris. <laughs> the Crocs. Give me a better alternative and I will consider. Waterproof, you can wash it out, protects your feet like this at the side, you can slip them on and off. If you're in the mud or you're trying to keep your feet clean in and out of a camper or a tent, no one go on, <laughs> you love them or you hate them. Pair of trail running shoes. Myself and Steph both have a set of trail running shoes. We love to run, specifically on trails. Now this is a braai. If anyone doesn't know what a braai is, you need to experience a braai. We've got it slow cooking on the braai. All our South African mates will know exactly what I'm talking about. A 10 litre water container. Now we use this water container to fill up the tank in the camper. This, my beautiful knife made out of a yak horn that we bought off the, uh, the knife maker in Osh in Kyrgyzstan. Very beautiful knife. Good knife should always be in the kit. Mosquito coils. The mozzies love the little Frenchies. So we got one of these and these do work. When there's not much wind around, we found if you stick a little mozzie coil under the, under the table, they do seem effective. Gas refill for our lighters to light the gas cooker in the camper and also to light my diesel stove. Inside here, I'm not gonna set it up, is a small windproof candle from the Swiss military. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Vandana. Very cool. Gas blowtorch. This thing is very handy, especially when I'm feeling a bit lazy and wanna light the braai the easy way, which happens more often than not. Also, if you get a stubborn nut or bolt or something on your vehicle that needs a bit of extra persuasion, bit of heat, the Lifesaver Jerry Can. I think we've spoke about that before. It's a virus and bacteria water filter, holds about 18 liters, I think. This thing's very good, very simple to use. Recent addition, we bought this at Mont Bell here in Japan. It's a water filter to take with us on long distance hikes. Now we do have the SteriPen as a backup, an ultraviolet light sterilizer. Awesome Woody for rock climbers specifically. It's made by an Australian company. Thank you guys, they sent us one of these to Armenia actually. And thank you Edward. Edward, our very good friend in Armenia. This thing, this is a porter ledge. That one time we used it was one of the most memorable experiences we've had on a big wall in Turkey. Hiking boots. I like to hike in hiking boots. Steph uses her trail running shoes or her approach shoes. She likes to hike in normal, in normal shoes. I like a good set of hiking boots. Camping chairs and a little camping table. 
And we've got these uh, Helinox ones. These ones are super lightweight and as you can see, pack up very, very small. That's the size of one chair. We've got two chairs and a small picnic table as well. Over here, my MSR Dragonfly diesel stove. I think we spoke about this and explained this one in a recent video, the diesel heater video. That thing's awesome recent addition to the kit and used all the time. Basic first aid kit, know what's in there. Steffi's in charge of that one, I don't know much about what's in there. Our jet boil could be up there with maybe the most used piece of kit that we have. Now we use that on hiking trips, we use that on rock climbing trips, and we even use that to boil water in the camper to conserve the gas, our actual LPG bottle. A puffy jacket, a good quality puffy jacket, I should say. Gore-Tex uh, waterproof jacket. Some form of weatherproof or waterproof jacket. Waterproof pants as well. We haven't used those so often. We did use them hiking in the snow a few times. And if we ever go skiing or snowboarding, then they come in handy for that too. Ah, this massive thing. It's a crash pad, a rock climbing crash pad. We used it on the Batang Valley in Tajikistan, and it was awesome. Steph actually wants me to get rid of that. Hiking sticks. This is something that I always said I'll never use, I'll be honest with you. They save you a lot, and they make a hike, a very steep hike, a lot safer. Two sleeping bags. Steffi's is not a great <laughs> sleeping bag. She needs an upgrade. Drink bottles. We have two one litre drink bottles and we also have two 600 mil ones that fit in our drink holders in the Defender. Gum boots or wellies or I don't know, they've probably got a hundred names in Western Australia. We'll call a set of these a set of gum boots. In here, I have tent pegs and a gimpy hammer. Heavy duty tent pegs that we use for the awning or maybe to pin down the tarpaulin if we've got the tarpaulin laid out. Good quality thick ones, you don't want them bending in a hard bit of soil or when you hit a rock. This backpack is full of our sports climbing equipment, two harnesses, quick drawers, all that kit. In the sports climbing bag we have our sports climbing rope, over here we have our big wall climbing rope. This is a bear bell. We learned that there are bears in Japan and they can actually be dangerous so you do have to be careful. The bear bell gets attached to this one. I've got a bear bell. <laughs> this is my Solomon running vest. Really good running vest for trail running again, long distance running. Behind me, the trusty MSR Hubba Hubba NX tent. We've had this one for about eight years, used it countless times. This is an incredibly awesome tent. Backpack, medium sized backpack. This is our backpack for day hikes. For example, if we're heading into the mountains or going rock climbing, I'll take this bag. Steph packs the lunch and the cooking equipment in that bag. Gators, very, very handy if you're bushwalking or hiking through rough terrain. We wore them when we walked. We walked one 60 kilometers in the Kimberleys to a place called Solia Falls. A lot of snakes around out in that area, a lot of dangerous snakes. We were, we were bush bashing, going through a lot of scrub. Massive backpack, this one. Now this is a 140 litre backpack made by Mountain Equipment, I think. In front of me right here, three boxes of rock climbing equipment. Another box of rock climbing equipment, carabiners and slings. We carry two extra rock climbing harnesses. That's for when people join us. And that does happen a lot as well. We've had people join us for rock climbing days. The privacy tent or shower tent, I've heard them called. This thing comes in really handy for an outdoor shower if you're in an area where people may show up. Rock climbing, hiking, camping, and training equipment. That's everything, that's absolutely everything. Like I mentioned earlier, I spent the morning emptying the camper out completely, brought everything inside here to this lovely house. Thank you, Dan and Aya again. What would you have in your perfect kit? Any questions, comments, advice, ideas, please leave a comment below. Thank you so very much for watching this video. Merci beaucoup, au revoir, catch you later. You may have heard me refer to cooking on coals as a bride many times before. And the reason for that is we spent a month rock climbing in South Africa many years ago. I was schooled on the fine art of the bride by an elderly South African gentleman in a campsite one night. I was making a pathetic attempt at 
cooking some lamb chops. This guy had been watching me from across the campsite for about half an hour. He came wandering over, stood and watched me at the fire there for another 10 minutes and said, out of the way, young fella. This is South Africa, mate. Here we bry. You're not in Australia anymore. It's not an effing barbecue. <laughs> 